Great. Well, thank you so much and good morning, commissioners and um, Ms. Joanne Polanco. I was the nominator of the 1942 U.S. Maritime Service Officer School. I'm extremely disappointed to not be able to present our nomination to you. This was very unexpected. I sincerely hope that politics did not come into play here, but we are perplexed that SHPO has, has supported, had supported the nomination for over 15 months and has suddenly withdrawn support for eligibility. I hope that during this process, I have been able to bring to light the importance and impact of the site, the history of the merchant mariners who trained in Alameda and bravely served our country. I hope that my extensive research will serve future historians. I want to thank all of the supporters of the nomination, including the American Merchant Marine Veterans, the International Organization of Masters, Mates, and Pilots, the USS Hornet Museum, the SS Jeremiah O'Brien, the Alameda Naval Air Museum, the Maritime Museum of San Diego, Cal Maritime, the Bruno family, the Fred J. Early Jr. family, the Alameda Architectural Preservation Society, and over 1,500 members of the public who expressed individual support. And I would also like to thank William Berg, who has, who has led me through this process. Thank you very much. Thank you. I have no other speaker cards for anyone in the room. Um, go ahead, sir. And then afterwards, we would ask you to fill out a speaker card if you would. Oh, okay. Well, we, don't have, we don't have any. Do another one. Go ahead, sir. Leo Bennett Koshan, El Dorado County. Good to see you all again. Interesting to observe the process. I'm working on what is, I'm told, the first request to delist the California landmark, as I'm sure you're all aware, landmarks up to 770 had minimal criteria. Uh, your staff has been incredibly helpful, um, but they don't have any real guidelines from my perspective. So currently we're utilizing the nomination process. And hopefully we'll be here in October, but I'm here as I've been processing all of this that perhaps have a better substantive conversation, as I've heard commissioners mention, it would be better if there was an agenda item, I don't know your process, where you discuss how do you delist? Because the federal government does have a process. And then when I looked it all up, just as is usual in the state, um, I find out that it's just basically, hey, you guys develop process to give you more work uh, for items that you just covered for the Registrar of Public Places. And it's my understanding that ultimately all these landmarks will be looked under that criteria. So I just think that there could be a better process than the one we're doing now so that we can have a better conversation. I know within the current you know, approach, Things like we talked about today, about re-examining history, the social context, those things are hard to put in. And as a resident of El Dorado County, California Landmark 141, which memorializes lynching by vigilantes, was approved in the 30s as a commercial venture, basically utilizing anecdotal history from the romanticizing of that period of time and doesn't include the fact that Manuel, Garcia, and Bissy lost their lives to a vigilante mob while law-abiding citizens urged it to stop. What I argue in the culture of where I live is we should be proud we didn't do rough justice. We had lots of lawyers. We had three outbreaks of lynching, and then it ended, and every single one of them citizens stood up and said, 
No, that's what I'd like. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning, Chair Adams and Historic Resource Commission. My name is Brendan Sullivan. I'm here to support fully the US Maritime Services Officer School, even though it was pulled from the agenda. I understand that it was nominated in part of, uh, part of this hearing today for over 15 months that it wasn't until it was pulled a little while ago due to a, a, a letter written by the, by the mayor's office in Alameda County, yet an appeal was filed and it went back on the agenda. But I don't understand much about commissions, but I, I hope there will be some sort of issue, issuing of a finding of fact of why it was pulled. It seems to me that there, at the very minimum, is some sort of procedural due process violation here as our applicant has not been heard nor any of her supporters. I came to, to support the application because I believe it, it meets both criterion under A and B and C. It's a unique campus associated with the lives of significant persons who left an indelible mark on our nation's history. 6,500 merchant mariners trained in Alameda and went to support the allies in World War II. Under criterion C, the campus embodied buildings that was unique in its purpose, design, limited available materials during that time period and engineered to include various training areas, living, working spaces under a tight time frame. Specifically, I'd like to highlight the builder, Fred J. Early, general contractor who was a master builder in his own right, employing 600 workers six days a week. Early, com he, uh, early completed the initial phase of the officer's training school in just three months. The grit and determination in facing shortages of construction materials, Early's company nonetheless persevered. A prolific builder in the Bay Area, Fred J. Early Jr. would go on to lead or participate in numerous projects, such as the construction of the Richmond San Rafael Bridge, BART stations at Montgomery and 12th Street in Oakland, and Lincoln High School, just to, remain, just to say a couple of them. He was also the builder of numerous wastewater treatment plants and essential infrastructure that supported the increased growth of the Bay Area and employed thousands of people over the years he constructs of these projects. Perhaps more importantly, soon after the completion of these projects, he was recruited to be a Naval Command in the Elite Construction Battalion or Seabees and sent to England to help the D-Day invasion. This is the architect of this, of this, of this school. Sir, we have about 30 seconds for me. On D-Day, he landed at Utah Beach and helped build out temporary facility using rhino piers and he helped design. After the allies were successful landing, his responsibilities turned to rebuilding the bomb portions of Cherbourg and Le Havre, critical tasks to help the American allies continue operations. He also received the Croix de Guerre, France by Charles de Gaulle in June of 27, uh, June 27, 1945. I'm sorry this nomination was withdrawn, but I'm gonna do all I can as an attorney practicing in the state of California for 18 years to see that it is heard at some point in time. But thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Hi there, and thanks for the time. I'm sorry it couldn't be longer. We had a great presentation planned today regarding the U.S. Maritime Officer Training School in Alameda, California. Two things I want to I want to mention though that are really worth mentioning here. Uh, there's no facility on the West Coast that really commemorates uh, what happened in World War II with the Merchant Marine. Uh, there is one site on the National Historic Register in Kings Point, New York. I believe the FPO write, wrote a letter to the effect that they trained officers too. And I want to make a real distinction here. Uh, some 18-year-olds graduate high school, and their only option is to go into the Navy, let's say, or into the Army. They enlist, and after a few years of good performance, they look for promotion. Other kids are a little bit more privileged and they can apply for an academy. They go to West Point, they get a senator or a rep to write a letter of recommendation. Those are the people who go to the service academies. They're, they're the elites, they're, they're fantastic uh, and they're a key part of our, our, of our armed forces. The people in Alameda were not the Kings Point crowd. They were the blue collar folks. They were the ones who enlisted as merchant mariners prior to the beginning of the war. Perhaps it was the only option really left to them for employment. And so they'd been at sea 14 months and they came to this specific 
four month program that was run out of the officer training school, very distinct from what happened at Kings Point, New York. In Kings Point, New York, a four year program was condensed to 16 months. Again, most of these are much younger kids who are really going into the service academy looking for a career. So I wanna make that distinction, uh, number one. Uh, number two, uh, there is a question about cert certified local government and proper procedure. And I hope that this commission takes a good look at that when you're evaluating a city's uh, application to be considered a CLG. Uh, we don't think that the historic advisory board process was followed properly here, which is unfortunate because as the mayor pointed out in her letter, this could have been taken care of already had they done things properly. Ironically, they did not. And that's why we got the opportunity potentially to come talk to you today. Uh, but at the same time, I'm concerned that they're not following procedure correctly. Uh, and so, uh, again, we, we really look for the Merchant Mariners uh, and hope that uh, in the future we can revisit this question. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have a speaker card for you? If you could fill one out after, but go ahead. Okay. Thank you. I'm Trisha Herrera Spencer. I'm a former mayor of the city of Alameda. I am currently a council member and I'm speaking in my individual capacity. First, I want to note uh, that our city does not have a strong mayor system. All council members have the same uh, authority in regards to any uh, uh, action or executive action taken. Uh, I think it's very important to note that because some cities do have strong mayors. I also want to speak to, uh, I am a proud Coast Guard mom. Uh, my daughter and my son-in-law both attended Cal Maritime. And I thought it was extremely noteworthy to have received a letter from them in support of the nomination. Uh, they are, as uh, they stated, the only uh, West Coast a facility like, like that. And uh, their letter of April 6, 2022, I actually, I'm, I want to read a little bit of it because you don't actually receive as much input from so far and wide for applications that were received for this application. Uh, it, it actually is shocking to me that it was not given the opportunity to be heard on the merits. But in regards to this letter, it says the preservation and addition of the remaining facility will provide a place to remember the many contributions of the merchant mariner officers that train there. That is extremely significant. Why is that so significant? Because they have the highest fatality of all who, of the different. Um, there were 243 thousand mariners that served in World War II, 9,521 perished while serving, a higher proportion of those killed than any other branch of the United States military. It saddens me that this organization will not, did not consider the application on the merits and continues to uh, not uh, recognize the efforts of the um, mer uh, merchant marines. I hope at some, some point you all will reconsider the application and that we will in fact have the opportunity uh, to be heard on the merits. And I also want to thank um, Carmen Reed who brought the application. Her work was extremely extensive and I uh, have heard of uh, other, um, just the discussion on other uh, applications that you all do take seriously. I think it's extremely unfortunate and damages the reputation that is so well deserved of your commission when you do not hear anything on the merits. Thank you. Yes. All right. Um, I have one person online who has pre-registered for public comments. Uh, so John Healy, I am allowing you to speak. Please unmute yourself and you will have three minutes. 
And I'll let you know when you have one minute remaining. So it'll be on the screen. Thank you. My name is John Healy. I represent a group called Save Alameda. We are a nonprofit 501c4 organization uh, based in Alameda for people that work and live in the city of Alameda. I, uh, first, I'd like to thank all of you for your work, everyone. It's a, it's a tough task, and especially now, so it is appreciated. I have to tell you, I'm stunned by this nomination from the U.S. Maritime Service School being taken off calendar, and especially at the last moment. This service school's complex uh, and buildings that are left is the last of its kind left in the world today. There are no other structures, none left of any kind. Fort Turnbull, Hoffman Island, St. Petersburg, Shefford's Bay, Avalon, Gallup's Island, they're all gone. These are the people who went to war without guns, and we could have not won World War II without them. They were the logistics people. They were the people that sailed the Liberty ships, and they were so important to us. Um, the people who built this facility were famous in their own right, as you heard earlier. Uh, Commander Early, who was on D-Day and they got the Croix de Guerre, and he crossed the Rhine with Patton, and he was the guy that built the facility and built a whole bunch of other things. Harry Bruno, the architect, is famous in his own right, and he was one of the very first commissioners of the San Francisco Bay Conservation and Development Commission. And the electricians, Wallace Scott and Ed Buckner, um, they did the Hoover Dam, the Grand Coulee Dam, uh, the Folsom Dam, BART. These people were amazing that put the structures together. And not just that, it's the people that went there. They have the Torpedo Club, which you, we didn't get to talk about any of these things. These are people who got sunk while in the Merchant Marine. These are not military people. These are civilians. These are all volunteers. Um, they receive a reserve commission, but they're not on active duty or anything like that. These are merchant marine people. And it was, was a special system and a special time when we were at war. And there are no other structures or anything like it. Without these people who brought the beans, bombs, and beef needed to fight and win the war, we wouldn't have won. So I have to say that 50% of the buildings are, and, and grounds are still there. So I have a very difficult time understanding the integrity issue. We need to preserve the history of these people. If it's only 50%, why aren't we supposed to be saving what's left? Isn't that one of the most important elements? So again, thank you very much, all of you, for your time. And uh, I appreciate that we will come back. Please don't be, you know, but this just doesn't pass the smell test. And we've got the PRA seeing the pressure that's been applied to people, and that's disappointing. But we have faith. I would ask you as commissioners, you're the body that keeps it together, look into this because without you, things just don't look right. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your comments. Uh, next, I have Faye Adelstein. I'm allowing you to speak. Please unmute yourself and you will have three minutes. I will. Oh. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, Faye Adelstein calling from the island of Alameda. Regarding uh, Secretary Polenko's statement in which she recognized the historic significance of the U.S. Maritime Officer School in Alameda and appeared to acknowledge that the site is unequivocally qualified for the nomination, yet pulled the nomination from the agenda um, for a second time, this time claiming a technicality, I ask by what authority can one person one appointee unilaterally block nominations such as this from a public hearing. And now I will continue with my notes. I strongly support the nomination of the U.S. Maritime Officers Training School. Last year, the Alameda Historical Advisory Board reaffirmed that the property has significant historic value. The site trained over 6,000 officers during a critical time in our nation's history and our participation in World War II. It took leadership and courage for those, these mariners, a civilian core of people of all backgrounds, together with women working as radio operators, to collectively organize the supply chain needs and deliver the goods across all theaters of war. Without these extraordinary efforts, we could not have won the war. These mariners suffered the highest casualty rate of all the service branches, one in 26. For the past eight decades, the merchant mar marines have not been properly recognized. It is only recently that they were granted a Congressional Gold Medal of Honor. 
This historic district, unique in that nearly half of the buildings still remain, embodies a strong visual reminder for future generations to understand the important mission of these mariners and their formidable contributions to our nations and the world history. I yield. Thank you, Ms. Adelstein. Thank you. Thank you, Donna. We can hold online. I think we have a, a person in the room who wants to speak. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for letting me speak. Um, my name is Janet Gibson, and um, I'm on the board of the Alameda Architectural Preservation Society. And that group was noted in the application that they support this. Um, I'm lucky enough to have been born before World War II started. So I experienced in uh, growing up in San Mateo, both the, the Coyote Point uh, site, um, be, because after the war, uh, it, it had many uses, including in San Mateo, having the only swimming pool that anybody in San Mateo could go to. There was no other one that existed. You might well think that nothing, nothing, nothing was built in the 40s until uh, the, the late when, when they began building again. So I lived in San Mateo. I went to Coyote Point. I saw the buildings change. I saw them become used as college of the San Mateo. And then when I went away to college and graduate school, I wound up eventually coming back to California and settling in Alameda, where we had the other part of that uh, merchant uh, site and it has survived. You know, Alameda is changing. The, it's remarkable. We're becoming part of a history of the Naval Air Station, which expands beyond where this site is, all the way into the, the point of Alameda, building new, uh, we have a new, a new fast uh, ferry that gets to San Francisco, I think in 15 minutes. So there's tourism there. People come and they go from one place to the other. We're a site that needs to be used and wants to be used by people. By letting this be destroyed, and that's what, what the, the original application was to preserve it, to change the insides, improve it. And all of a sudden it's changed now because this is money folks and this is politics. It's the worst thing that can happen for our preservation to not listen to keeping the great land that we have there. It's on both sides of a, of a, of a avenue and this, the, uh, it's under control of different people and different parts. And a lot of it's being preserved that we're not even talking about, but it's all tied together. So I ask you, please think of how you can reconsider this how you can not think of money or the interest of politicians, but hear the great research that was not available until Carmen did that. So thank you very much. Thank you. Next online, I have Harvey Rosenthal. Mr. Rosenthal, I'm allowing you to speak. Uh, please unmute yourself and you will have three minutes. Uh, yes, hello. Regarding the officer school in Alameda, it is particularly disturbing this item has been pulled from today's commission agenda, given that a public records request has revealed behind the scenes maneuvering by city and state officials offices to get this nomination rejected. This would appear to violate open government rules. It also suggests that a priority of homeless services trump consideration of historic significance, integrity, and the rarity of the remaining buildings of the officer school campus, which was supposed to be the focus of the Historical Resources Commission. The staff of the commission had, <coughs> excuse me, recommended approval of the nomination. <clears throat> Why has the commission not been allowed to even consider its nomination? Politics. 
the Merchant Marine was never even consulted about its opinion on this nomination. The reason given by Ms. Polanco's decision uh, to pull the item from the agenda was due to a lack of remaining hierarchy based on the importance of buildings on a military type campus. This only recently made argument was never made by oppon opponents of the nomination in prior years, uh, nor was an administrative core ever mentioned in other previous reports. It would be hard to justify an administrative building facing away from the campus at the northern edge of the property near a swimming pool and a gymnasium auditorium as an administrative core. The most important core was that related to buildings that actually trained officers for the mission, the remaining engineering and seamanship buildings between which the mess hall, galley and barracks buildings are still located. Much false information has been submitted by opponents of the nomination, which may have influenced today's decision to remove it from the agenda. National register listing criteria allow modifications depending on rarity. The officer school could not be more rare as the only example left in the nation of facilities built in World War II to rapidly deploy either officers or cadets in the maritime service rapidly in the war effort. Rarity was not previously considered in prior reviews or in today's decision to pull the item from the agenda. Given the importance of the Merchant Marine effort on the West Coast, there is no other significant site on the West Coast that tells the story of the courage and sacrifices of the merchant mariners in these wars. The decision to pull the officer school from today's agenda runs counter to recommendations for approval from recognized architectural experts. The commission should have been allowed to consider by itself the merits of this this nomination. Thank you. Um, thank you, sir. Uh, Joe Loparo, I'm allowing you to speak. Speak, please unmute yourself, and you will have three minutes. Hello, all. My name is Joe Loparo. I'm a Vietnam vet, a commissioner on the Alameda County Veterans Affairs Commission also a service officer for the American Legion. I speak here today as an individual. I came here to urge you all to support the nomination for the entry of the U.S. Maritime Citizen Training School, Officers Training School, located in Alameda, California, to be added to the National Register of Historic Places. Seeing that it was unilaterally decided to not even be heard or discussed is saddened. So little is known by most of the citizens about the commitment these men made in support of the war that was to end all wars. Many gave their lives and all deserve to be remembered. I recently lost a man that I had been blessed to have met in 2014, Paul Jones. Paul was a merchant mariner in World War II. He would proudly tell me of their challenges in support of our troops. He would also talk in a tone of sadness how they were not to be considered veterans, though many had scars both seen and unseen. Paul passed this year on January 25th at 96 years old, and I will have the privilege of having dinner with his wife and daughter tomorrow to celebrate their 75th wedding anniversary. Finally, in 1988, their contribution was acknowledged as veterans by the U.S. Department of Veteran Affairs, but even today, they still fight for benefits deserved. I know as a Vietnam veteran, the feeling of returning from war and being berated and disrespected for our service. As a proud member of the Vietnam Veterans of America, our commitment is that no veteran returns home to the environment we did. We will fight for every man and woman for their due respect as having put their life on the line so we may all enjoy the great lives available to all in America. We have to do more to preserve the memory of these men. It is sad to hear the item pulled from the agenda without hearing the community speak. As a commissioner on a commission, I would be quite vocal about a unilateral decision of removing an item from the agenda. Just a reminder, when your military is called upon, we do whatever it takes. I would hope that our government would do the same. In closing, I wanna remind you all that if you truly wish to thank a veteran, be the kind of American that's worth dying for. 
I would like to use the remainder of my time in memory of Paul Jones. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, next, I have Mike Van Dyne. Mr. Van Dyne, I'm allowing you to speak. Please unmute yourself and you will have three minutes. Looks like you're unmuted, but we can't hear you. Now? Yes. Okay, sorry, thank you very much. Uh, I wanna say there's no dispute about the historical significance of this district. The only issue at hand is to assess the integrity of the site. However, judging the integrity of a historical district is subjective. Prior to this application, we only had the opinion of Page and Turnbull that some of the buildings lacked integrity. This application's extensive new research and inclusion of all remaining structures and objects in a district opposes Page and Turnbull's opinion and shows how reasonable people might disagree. The National Register provides clarity and has instructions on evaluating a property's historic integrity. In Bulletin 15, there's a specific section titled Rare Examples of a Property Type, which states the property must have the essential physical features that enable it to convey a historic character or information. However, the rarity and poor condition of other existing examples of the type may justify accepting a greater degree of alteration and fewer features provided that enough of the property survives for it to be a significant resource. As you know from the application, there are no other examples of World War II merchant mariners train stations rapidly built from the ground up existing in California or anywhere else in the nation. So it most certainly is rare. In addition, as instructed, enough of the property survives for it to be significant. Nearly 50% of the original buildings constructed in the district stand today. The entire length of the original campus is included in the district as you walk down McKay Avenue, which was used as a parade ground. Modifications such as aluminum windows have not erased the district's original stature, presence, and historical significance. As you can see, this district meets the qualifications outlined by the National Register. Page and Turnbull failed to address this site as a district and has never addressed it as rare. Acknowledging and preserving our history has great social importance. The fact that the SHPO would bend to political pressure not allow an item be heard by the commission or public after twice rescheduling it to be heard is an abuse of power. With the SHPO who acts in this manner, what is the future of our state's history? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, Jay Garfinkel. Mr. Garfinkel, I'm allowing you to speak. You will have three minutes. Please unmute yourself. Thank you. Uh, I apologize for my earlier outburst. Uh, I found this very frustrating. I was prepared to uh, speak on the merits of the application, but uh, these have been very well uh, expounded on by previous speakers. My concern at this point is that while this commission was established with the mandate of being uh, free or immune to, free from or immune to uh, public uh, political influence, uh, this uh, has not been honored. Uh, numerous uh, political actors have uh, participated in blocking the application. These include uh, now Attorney General Rob Bonta, State Senator uh, uh, Spinner, uh, Congresswoman Barbara Lee, and others. Um, the uh, SHPO had plenty of opportunity to address these technical issues over the past 15 or 16 months. She chose not to do so. She could have asked for clarification during the weeks leading up to this second uh, scheduled hearing. She chose not to do so. Uh, this is not a reflection on the commissioners. But I, at this point, I would ask the commissioners to dig into this. You are free from public uh, political influence. The bureaucrat who controls your agenda apparently is not free from political influence. And I think you should take a, a deep uh, look at this. 
I have seen from your previous uh, hearings that you are very careful to avoid political influence. In fact, the chair uh, pointed this out several times uh, during the uh, April hearing regarding the uh, St. Francis Woods um, hearing uh, application uh, when a number of uh, YIMBYs uh, pounced on the uh, nomination, you carefully repeatedly pointed out that you would not consider political factors. And here again, you haven't considered political factors, but you have been allowed to be manipulated by a, a, a political appointee uh, who holds her position uh, at the pleasure of the politicians. And I would ask you to look into this and clean this up so that it doesn't happen to another applicant. Thank you. Thank you. All right, and one final speaker, Patrick Cotter, I'm allowing you to speak. Please unmute yourself and you will have three minutes. Thank you for the opportunity to address the commission. I represent the American Merchant Marine Veterans Organization. We are strongly supportive of the designation of the officer school as um, on the National Register. We also concur with the new information that Ms. Reed has provided for, the, for her application. It undoubtedly makes a good case to um, designate the property. We also feel that um, there's a, there's a problem here with the due process, uh, which is guaranteed to citizens under the Fifth and Fourteenth Amendment of the United States Constitution, and you have not allowed this information to be heard. We think the process-related objections expressed by some of the opponents should not hinder the Commission's decision to list the school on the National Register. Failing to consider the full record of existing information, making decisions about the officer's school property in conflicting ways, and reluctance to consider new information are neither in the best interest of the United States nor the spirit of the National Historic Preservation Act. I'll remind you that there's a law that was just uh, signed in 2020 called the Merchant Mariners of World War II Congressional Gold Medal Act. And in there, Congress found that the feats and accomplishments of the Merchant Marine are deserving of broader public recognition. Designating this site would be one of those recognitions. We also think that, that an adaptive reuse um, project should be prepared for the site to reduce the waste from needless demolition of the school's buildings, to reuse the officer's school as approved by about 53% of Alameda voters in April 9th, uh, 2019. The word reuse appears in measure A that was adopted by the, the voters and it was also, believe it or not, supported by the mayor of Alameda. And then the recycling the valor, valor and accomplishments of U.S. maritime officers um, with people who visit the site through collaborative education programs and plaques and a more robust memorial structure. Loss of historic buildings caused by past demolition practices in Alameda or changes to a, a plan approved by Alameda voters should not justify destruction of remaining historical structures at the U.S. Maritime Service Officer School used to train about 6,500 officers who served in World War II and other major military sea lift operations in Vietnam and Korean War. The American Merchant Marine Veterans asked the commission to reconsider this inappropriate decision to pull the agenda item today and prevent destruction of a significant national historic resource. Thank you. Thank you. I have one additional hand that was just raised. Uh, Margaret Hall, I'm allowing you to speak. Please unmute yourself and you will have three minutes. Hello, thank you for the opportunity to speak. I just wanna express my support for all the, the comments uh, for the nomination of the site in Alameda. I'm a lifelong resident of Alameda and uh, daughter and granddaughter of World War I and II veterans. And this is this area has always been a, a, a special place in my heart, going, going there with, with my dad and also attending camp across the street and, and always knowing of 
the significance of our participation in World War II, clearly the shining moment of our nation. I, nothing since that time comes close to, to our, our military involvement in such an honorable way. I'm, I'm hoping that this, this will get reheard. I'm completely disheartened by it being pulled from the agenda so precipitously, especially all the amazing hard work and outpouring of support for this nomination. Um, and I, I generally hope that you, you seriously consider all the comments, particularly the, the previous speaker who so eloquently described why this, this needs to, to be saved. Thank you. Thank you. I have another hand that was just raised. Um, Thomas Payne, I'm allowing you to speak. Please unmute yourself and you will have three minutes. Uh, thank you very much for allowing me to speak. Um, I echo the sentiment of everybody here who's very disappointed in what seems to be the unilateral decision to pull this um, consideration for this for this uh, historical site. Um, when I was uh, when I first moved to San Francisco, my father and I used to come out to Alameda. My father was stationed at NAS in the late fifties, and um, we used to drive out to Alameda and take a left, take a right, and just go out to the base. And I was unaware of really what the rest of Alameda was all about. And um, grad gradually over time, um, <laughs> some really fun stories came out about my father's time at NAS Alameda and his pride in serving um, in, the, in the military. And, um, but un unbeknownst to me, there was this whole other facet of Alameda, which included the beautiful historical Victorians and obviously this facility. Um, we moved out here four years ago and from San Francisco and people tell me that the islands changed so much and we missed out on the best of Alameda's days. And while I believe that it's important to build housing, I feel the fabric of towns like ours is being ripped away as we forsake history for progress. The Maritime Service School uh, Officer School is a good example. Sacrificing it for a plaque does not allow our children to experience firsthand the relevance of a place like this to the freedom and prosperity of our nation. Its active years occurred at a time when, as Margaret says, America rose from its relative isolation to stand for the defense and freedom and prosperity for people across, across the globe. It really was the, 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 the rise of uh, America as uh, the shiny beacon on the hill for all to see. This uh, facility was part and parcel of all of that, and it certainly merits consideration by the commission to be heard and uh, 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 you know, considered on, um, on the overall grounds under which it has been recognized. So I hope the commission um, uh, uh, you know, considers reconsidering the, the nomination um, to preserve for the future generations the experience of seeing this uh, uh, facility lest those great struggles be forgotten, the struggles of World War II, which our country arose from. So I, with that, I thank you very much. Thank you. Would anyone else like to speak during this public comment period? Please raise your hand. Oh, uh, just had a hand raised. Uh, Allison Verich, I'm allowing you to speak. Please unmute yourself and you will have three minutes. Hi, thank you. So I'm calling from Washington, D.C., but I'm a native of Central California. I went to the school, uh, to college in the Bay Area, and um, spent, um, visited Alameda on numerous occasions, and I'm familiar with the site. It's a very special area with a strong military presence. Um, it would be amazing to recognize on the National Register of Historic Places. Um, where my husband just recently retired after 27 years of service in the Navy. We've traveled all around the world visiting military and historic sites. It's one of the things we do. Um, we have three children. Um, two of them are Navy ROTC at Yale with a third, perhaps doing that as well. So we have a strong tradition of military um, um, lifestyle and appreciation for all that service members do for our country. 
Um, we all know that the United States is a very special place historically for our military presence and ability to perform overseas and show the world um, how strong we are with um, uh, our values and all of that. But I just want to say it's we just came back from Normandy for the first time. It's been a bench, you know, um, um, something we've all wanted to do. We visited Normandy in France where we saw historical um, the, one of the best examples of our military um, strength and heroism. Um, and it was so, so touching. And Alameda has a touch of that. And so we would just like you to consider the value of having that type of history on our soil where we live um, so that future generations like my own children um, can appreciate that. And, and a plaque like one of the gentlemen mentioned is really doing this, having the same effect on our future generations. Anyway, thank you for your consideration. I hope you support it. Thank you for your comments.